till this day, sometimes like, me and my friends at uni, we have these moments where we're like, wait, we're Cambridge students. Yeah, I, I never thought I was going to get in. Ever. I felt elated to get into Cambridge, but I also felt a huge pressure. I'm currently applying to Cambridge, which is the most stressful application of my whole life. I knew it was going to be academically challenging, but I couldn't prepare for, and I hadn't prepared for, all the other challenging aspects of it. culture shock for me was like food. In London you will always find a place that's halal, like you don't even have to think about it. And so I started eating all these vegetables. <laughs> I, I never ate this healthy in my life. Like I was having aubergine and it was a very hard time. It was a very hard time. We used to have just halal Wednesdays. People would talk to me, I'm like, is it Wednesday? You're walking down the street and you'll give another black person like that nod and smile. And it's just like, where else would you do that but Cambridge? There's something about the physical space of Cambridge. Every aspect, you know, the people you interact with, all those spaces challenge you. I remember like my first formal hall, it was matriculation dinner and we had our gowns on and I thought the gown was weird itself. I thought I was like in a Harry Potter movie. I was like, my Ravenclaw is showing. Formal halls in Cambridge can be a place of incredible empowerment, but at the same time also isolation. There's been moments where I have felt like I am the only person who's different. I'm the only one who stands out. There was pictures of just like white men, like everywhere, like you're eating dinner in front of you. And it's almost telling you, you do not belong. And then you're looking around you and it's just mostly white people and you're like, yeah, no, I'm not supposed to be here. I felt that I had to prove myself as a woman. I felt that I had to prove myself as a black woman. I felt that I had to prove myself as a Muslim black woman. You know, feeling so out of place, um, that gets to you after a while and it builds up. We didn't see anyone else around us feeling like that, but it was just us who were feeling like that. So we knew it was definitely a shared experience we were having. Growing up, I never felt like being Somali was ever shown to be a good thing. Whether that was, you know, Islamophobia, like Al-Shabaab terrorizing East Africa, Somali pirates. It always felt like it was just a weird ethnicity to be. But I think that clashing with the stories that your parents tell you of how beautiful home was to them, it almost felt like I had a piece of home in those stories. Even though I was born and raised in Europe, it almost felt like I was there. Who's bringing the chef? Wow, look at the curtain. <laughs> well, this, is, this looks like a Somali it household. Really does. It smells oh, so good. good. It's, can you smell it? Oh, see. It smells yeah. like home. It smells, it smells like, like home. home. Literally. Yeah. Oh, my 
<laughs> and I went to my auntie's house for the first time like in like two years. And the first thing she said to me is like, Are you, what university are you applying for? Obviously, I didn't tell any of my family that I'm applying to Cambridge. And then she, you know what she said to me? She's like, why are you moving out? Is it because you want to run away from your family? And I was in, in my head, yeah, right? I was like, yes, 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 yes. Because <laughs> I grew up with my mom just telling me all these proverbs in, um, in everyday situations. And um, one of my favorite ones was, Dara lehen dahan maka aliyo. It means clothes that aren't yours can't shelter you from the cold. Mm -hmm. But just the idea of like trying to fit into something that's not you, yeah. it's not going to feel right or do you any service. Um, yeah, that was one of my favourite. Do you apply products. that to your Cambridge experience? For my Cam I mean, I think now, like, the more time I've spent in Cambridge, the more time I've had to settle down and just mm. actually think about who am I because I think I just got lost in the source mm. <laughs> when I first came it was like all this newfound freedom I'm by myself I can do what I want yeah. and so like I think identity for a bit wasn't like a thing I was thinking about it was more like it's half so and I'm discovering yeah. myself mm. but um now I think I'm taking that a lot more into consideration like do thing like do your parents mm the justice that they deserve and be who you're supposed to be. My parents didn't, they didn't really realize how big Cambridge was initially. When I did get in, even till this day, like my mom would call me every single day just to have you prayed, have to please don't forget. They didn't want me to be different from who they know me to be, if that makes sense. They didn't want me to be influenced. It's easy for you to ignore their struggles and just say, me, 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 like I want to do this and I should be able to do that. But the more I've grown up, the more I've started to just realise how much they've had to sacrifice. A civil war broke out in 1991 in Somalia. A lot of the Somali diaspora haven't gone over that trauma. That trauma still carries with them till this day. I don't think me studying at Cambridge could ever count for or sort of be compared to my parents' struggle. Like, I don't think it's, you know, I fled from war, but my daughter goes to Cambridge. It was worth it. I don't think it will ever um, just be comparable. At the time, I used to think it was just them telling me stories about home to make me more aware of my Somali culture. Thinking back now, actually, I think it was a really therapeutic thing for them. In many ways, I was really envious of my mom's and my dad's life in Somalia because I realized that I would never have a sense of home like that. Like you, you're, you're born into a country um, and that's all you know, you know, the people are all you know. And <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. That's really weird. The Somalia they speak of and the Somalia you know it's not the same. So you're just like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like a romanticised almost. Yeah, a though. very romanticised. I think the nostalgia is also the dream. So they came here, they're like, we're going to live here temporarily and then go back yeah, home and then build up the, like, the Somali they knew. And then they never let go of that dream. Even till this day, my parents are like, after all you guys finish you're like, when your younger sister goes to university, I'm going back home. Yeah. So that's the mentality you grow up with. And you always hear home is there. But to you, it's like, that, that's, yeah, I'm like, I don't know what that is. Whenever they spoke about home or going back home or family, it was always linked to Somalia. And that sort of created this barrier between like the children and the parents. The home that they're speaking of is not 
my home because I haven't been there, wasn't born there, wasn't raised there. Somali culture in the West or in the UK is different from Somali culture in Somalia. You aren't necessarily going to fit in when you go back home. Oh God, okay. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it because it was completely the opposite of everything I knew. I couldn't grasp the complete culture switch. It's hot, there's canal, there's like mosquitoes, there's like, you're going, like, it's just, oh my God. And then they asked me to herd sheep. I remember looking at it and I was just like, how the hell am I going to do this? But I felt like a proper Somali at that moment. I was like, I'm herding sheep. <laughs> I had built up this image in my head of what Somalia was and I thought I would go back and I thought instantly at home, um, but I didn't. I, I went there and I, 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 had, I was complaining a lot <laughs> and um, I think a lot of people instantly saw me as a foreigner. I did feel out of place. Um, I was being called fish and chips. I will say this, yeah, that you're not British enough when you're in London and you're not Somali enough when you're in Somalia. And that is like the most difficult thing that I battle my identity, is that where do I fit in? I identify most with being Somali because naturally being Somali encompasses being black, it encompasses being Muslim. I think that without Islam, a lot of the times, my experiences with things would be quite difficult. Yeah, the hijab. The hijab is me, I am the hijab. Like, we're one. That is so cringe. <laughs> I definitely do see the differences of how I'm treated when I'm wearing the headscarf and when I'm not. I tend to feel like there's a lot more weight on my shoulders if I'm wearing the headscarf because I know I should behave a certain way. The non-Muslims might look at you and think, why are you going clubbing? You're a Muslim girl, for example. But for me, it's, I want to go and I'm still Muslim. So. Growing up in London, it's this real nice contrast of feeling invisible, but yet feeling like you, you belong in, with a community. I just took that for granted, walking down the street and seeing people like myself and just blending in. But when I got to Cambridge, it's this real contrast of just feeling highly visible. A lot of people don't understand that. For you to navigate England, you kind of have to lose your Somali bit. You don't have to lose it completely, but you kind of have to carry it as like a chip on your shoulder. Like, use it when you need to. When people question your identity constantly, you end up questioning yourself. Oh, am I representing Somali people? Am I representing Muslim people? Am I representing black people? When I came to Cambridge and I realised there are some people who have never met this black and Muslim combination um, that I felt maybe there is a need to educate people and sort of show people that Somali women exist and we are determined to make change in a positive and progressive way. Everyone's afraid of like being the odd one out, then how are we going to build these spaces of solidarity within these um, white or elitist institutions. There's so many women of colour and we all are worthy. 
Although we all feel, you know, we suffer from imposter syndrome, space like that made me realize this is something that a lot of people are feeling. Surprisingly, being at Cambridge has made me more Somali. Having to like sort of talk to other people about Somalia and our culture and it, that in itself has made me very proud and appreciate who I am. A lot of the times it's like, yes, I am a Somali woman, like, proud of that. And that was very different from when I was growing up. I feel very proud of being British and I feel really, really proud of being Somali. They are both like a, an intrinsic part of me and an intrinsic part of my identity and I wouldn't want to separate the two. What would it actually mean to be accepted into Cambridge? It would mean a lot. I can show that the next generation, like my cousins, that for them to aspire high isn't a joke because our parents didn't do it or our older cousins or relatives that we don't know then they know that there's an actual physical embodiment of someone that's had a dream, chased it and actually achieved it. And a legacy, I will leave a legacy behind, yeah.